It's been over 8 years since the game we now know as Final Fantasy XV was announced to the world. It stands as one of the most infamously delayed games of all time, with only the likes of Duke Nukem Forever and The Last Guardian able to hold a candle to it. For those who haven't followed Final Fantasy XV's entire development timeline, it can be quite confusing to understand why it's taken so long to finish and what exactly happened along the way. This video will attempt to shed light on the situation in as much detail as possible. We'll be covering everything from graphical overhauls to resource mismanagement and even staff member issues. So sit tight and let's begin this story on that fateful day at E3 2006. At Sony's 2006 E3 press conference, Square Enix announced Final Fantasy XIII, the next entry in the company's long-running RPG franchise. At the same time, they announced a separate version dubbed Final Fantasy vs. XIII, a title that was to be a PlayStation 3 exclusive. Take a look at Final Fantasy XIII on PlayStation 3, which will become available in multiple versions, including Final Fantasy XIII and Final Fantasy vs. XIII. This led to speculation about what this other version was exactly, as no footage was shown or details given at the time of its announcement. In the days following, Square Enix would shed light on this mysterious game, as well as provide some surprising information about how it was tied to the mainline 13 title. A teaser trailer for Final Fantasy vs. 13 was released soon after, depicting a dark-haired character we would come to know as Noctis, sitting on a throne, walking outside, and then approaching an army of troops. Noctis showed off the ability to deflect bullets with an array of magical swords. The overall tone of the teaser was much darker than what Final Fantasy fans had seen before. This was all thanks to the game's director, Tetsuya Nomura. Nomura might be best known for his work on the Kingdom Hearts franchise, a series that's known for its heartwarming stories and undeniable charm. Nomura sought to bring a more grounded story to the Final Fantasy series in this Versus 13 entry, a fantasy based on reality was a moniker that would follow the game for years to come. It was also revealed that Versus 13 was to be a part of a much larger compilation of games known as Fabula Nova Crystallis, which in Latin translates to The New Tale of the Crystal. This trio of games was to share the same mythos, focusing on crystals tied to various deities, with the development teams behind each entry free to interpret the mythos as they saw fit. The flagship title in this compilation was set to be Final Fantasy 13 which later released in North America in 2010. The next of these was called Final Fantasy Agito 13. It was to be the mobile version for the series for smartphones, but development later shifted to the PlayStation Portable, and eventually it was renamed Final Fantasy Type-0. The last of these was Final Fantasy vs. 13, which would offer something more action-oriented and take place in a neo-modern setting. In the weeks following E3 2006, Tetsuya Nomura spoke with Japanese gaming magazine Guy Maga and told them, Absolutely nothing has been done on the actual scenario. However, I've had the plot worked out for some time, so you could say I'm discussing the plot and concept with the staff. However, we've yet to start actual work on the scenario. To this day, many still believe Final Fantasy vs. XIII had been in full development since 2006, yet when it was originally announced, real work on the game had yet to truly begin. In late 2006, Square Enix showed an extended trailer of the one shown at E3 at Japan's Jump Festa. In it, Noctis was shown in a car being driven down a highway. It later cuts to Noctis engaging soldiers by using weapons that seem to appear out of thin air, as well as the ability to teleport. In a recurring trend that would set the tone for Final Fantasy vs. XIII's development for years to come, fans would have to wait almost a full year for any substantial update on this mysterious title. Throughout 2007, director Tetsuya Nomura would sprinkle in morsels of information during his interviews providing minor story and gameplay details while regularly stating that a substantial update would be coming at a later time. It wouldn't be until Tokyo Game Show in September that Square would show a new trailer for the game. In a behind closed doors trailer, Square Enix showcased new bits of footage of the game, mostly using the same battle sequence of Noctis shown prior. The new footage did however reveal three new characters. A mysterious hooded character with the ability to wield magic, an older looking man who appeared to be in charge of some prestigious group, and a young blonde male. The cuts were pretty quick and no real context was given to any of the new footage. 2008 would serve as arguably the most tumultuous year in Final Fantasy vs. XIII's development thus far. On the outside, it would appear that development was moving along quite well, as fans would get the best look of the game yet. However, the same could not be said for the development teams behind the scenes. In June, Square Enix announced an upcoming event entitled DK Sigma 3713 
in which they would showcase a slew of upcoming games from both the Kingdom Hearts and Final Fantasy franchises, including Versus 13. However, leading up to the event, a reported rumor from Japanese gaming magazine Famitsu stated that Versus 13's development had been put on hold. The reported rumor was supposedly from an interview with Versus 13's director Tetsuya Nomura. Square would quickly squash this report, stating, Reports that development for Final Fantasy vs. XIII is on hold are false. The truth of the situation is that when free, some staff from the Versus team have been helping with the XIII team on development on Final Fantasy XIII. Development for both titles is continuing as originally scheduled. These conflicting reports made it difficult to discern who exactly was telling the truth. In hindsight, it's clear that something was going wrong with the development of Final Fantasy XIII. The title was obviously in some form of production before it was announced at E3 2006, and it didn't end up releasing until December of 2009 in Japan and March 2010 in North America. Since Final Fantasy XIII was a top priority at Square Enix, it wouldn't be too far-fetched to assume that development had temporarily halted on Versus XIII to hasten the release of Final Fantasy XIII. Despite all this, Versus XIII debuted a brand new CG trailer at Square's event that certainly impressed. The trailer was easily the most substantial media provided yet, running slightly over 5 minutes in length and showcasing a variety of story concepts. The fight scene previously shown was spliced in between staff credits that would include members from Kingdom Hearts and Final Fantasy VII Advent Children. A number of new characters were shown for the first time, including a blonde haired girl we would come to know as Stella. Noctis and Stella appeared to have a bit of a complicated relationship as it showed the two drawing weapons on one another, while later in the trailer they appear to be in a more formal, amicable setting. A hooded figure appears later hinting that it could be Stella, but the character's face is never actually shown. For a few brief moments we're introduced to an older looking man at the head of what appears to be a meeting. We would later come to know this character as King Regis, ruler of Lucius and father of Noctis. Lastly but certainly not least we meet a trio of Noctis' compatriots. The first of these being an energetic young looking blonde male named Prompto. Next a more muscular long haired male named Gladiolus. And lastly, a young, tall male sporting a pair of glasses and a calm demeanor, Ignis. The trailer would show this foursome in a variety of environments from cityscapes, deserts, and some kind of tense car ride. It was later revealed that the theme of brotherhood was central to Final Fantasy vs. XIII's story and that the plot would be that of a road trip of sorts. The trailer went a long way to showcasing that as the four characters appear to be quite close throughout. Another thing that was immediately evident was that the graphical quality had taken a huge leap from the initial reveal trailer, particularly when it came to character facial details and animation. While impressive, the trailer left a lot to be desired as it was still all pre-rendered CG with actual in-game footage yet to still be shown. This would be the last substantial update fans would get for Versus 13 for almost three years as big show after big show would go by with almost no mention at all. The events that followed proved to be the most interesting yet but fans at the time continued to be frustrated. From 2008 until Versus 13's next big update in 2011, game director Tetsuya Nomura was tasked to work on another 10 games, including serving as director on 4 of them. Obviously spending time to work on these other titles would divert his full attention from Versus 13 and further delay the game. While pulling the game's director away to work on other projects clearly hampered Versus 13's development, it would be another mainline Final Fantasy that may have been the biggest culprit of them all. In March of 2010, the same month of Final Fantasy XIII's worldwide release, development of a sequel began in what would be known as Final Fantasy XIII II. When XIII II was announced in 2011, this left a lot of fans scratching their heads wondering why Square Enix would work on another XIII title when there hadn't been a major update on Versus XIII in several years. This led many to speculate that Versus XIII staff might be getting pulled yet again to work on this new title. However, the majority of the development for XIII II would be farmed out to longtime Square Enix partner Triace, with only a relatively small team working on the game internally at Square Enix. The game that may have ultimately served as the biggest deterrent to Versus 13's development was a new MMO, Final Fantasy XIV Online. When it eventually released later in 2010, it was met with almost universal disdain from fans and critics alike, with some calling it a step backwards for the genre and a broken, incomplete mess. While Final Fantasy XIV's initial development didn't necessarily impact Versus XIII's, what followed next very well may have. In a press conference in 2011, Square Enix CEO at the time Yoichi Wada vowed to fix Final Fantasy XIV Online 
and even went as far as to say the Final Fantasy brand had been greatly damaged as a result of the game's state of release. In an almost unprecedented move, Square Enix went on to completely remake and re-release the game as Final Fantasy XIV A Realm Reborn in 2013. The title was much more well received and still has a lively community today. However, in a sales report in 2012, Yoichi Wada admits that the poor release of the original Final Fantasy XIV greatly impacted development of other titles. Wada went on to say, The unsuccessful launch of Final Fantasy XIV caused a negative chain of events in other areas across the businesses. One notable example is the significant delay of new HD game titles in Japan. While it was never explicitly stated what games were affected, it was clear that the biggest victim was Final Fantasy Vs. XIII, as other mainline Final Fantasy XIII titles continued to release in relatively short periods of time and still no Vs. XIII release date in sight. Other unannounced projects may have been scrapped completely, but to this day, that's still unknown. This period wouldn't be all bad news though, as the first in-game footage would finally be revealed at 2010's Tokyo Game Show. The only unfortunate part was that the new footage was all of about 25 seconds long. In it, we see a quick shot of Noctis leaning up against a fence before quickly cutting away to him running around in some open, desolate environments. The footage ends with Noctis doing battle with a giant behemoth in the middle of a city street, demonstrating Versus 13's more action-oriented combat. After such a long hiatus of not showing any new media, it was exciting to see that the game still existed and had some in-game assets, no matter how few they may have been. Fans would only have to wait a bit longer to see Versus 13's biggest update yet since it was announced five years prior. In January of the following year at the company's first production department premiere event, Square Enix would finally reveal substantial gameplay for its long in development RPG. The trailer began with a short CG sequence showcasing Noctis being chauffeured to what appeared to be a fancy event, as he was well dressed in a suit. It then cuts to an in-game scene of Noctis and Stella having a conversation at a formal event. They seem friendly to one another at the time. Noctis' father Regis is then shown for a brief moment sitting atop his throne. The trailer takes an action-packed turn as a ship crashes the event with a squad of soldiers appearing among the debris. Noctis and his team fight back to showcase more of the game's combat system, which included switching to any party member on the fly, magic, the use of vehicles, and much more. Each member appeared to have their own unique combat style, with Prompto having a third-person shooting mechanic. Versus 13's game world appeared to be much more open than recent entries, with the trailer showcasing some open grassy areas and a variety of city streets. While the trailer was no doubt impressive and exciting at the time, the excitement wouldn't sustain for too long as rumors of the game's cancellation began to surface. After missing June's E3 event yet again in 2012, questions started arising about the status of Versus 13. In July of 2012, Kotaku reported a rumor from numerous sources claiming that the game had been canceled. Various other reputable sites spread the rumor and it appeared the end may finally have come for this ill-fated game. The rumor was quickly squashed, however, by Square Enix CEO Yoichi Wada in a tweet stating, There's someone making a false rumor that Versus 13 was cancelled. He went on to say, Haha, just a minute ago the regular Versus meeting ended. If you saw the presentation of the city, it did knock you off your feet. Lol. This would put to rest any questions about whether the game was still in development, but the fact remained that nothing new had been shown of Versus 13 in about a year and a half. From a fan's perspective, it appeared as if the game was stuck in some kind of development hell, and in fact a lot was going on behind the scenes that had to wait to be revealed at a later time. Around the same time of the cancellation rumor, a number of monumental changes were made to the project. The first of these was assigning a number of staff members from Final Fantasy Type-0 to begin work on Final Fantasy Vs. XIII, including Type-0's director, Hajime Tabata. It was later revealed that Tabata would join Tetsuya Nomura as co-director on the project in an effort to hasten Vs. XIII's development. The next of these shifts would be a platform change. Square Enix got wind of Sony and Microsoft's next generation of consoles back in 2011, the PlayStation 4 and the Xbox One. It was at this time that the project grew so large that it was decided internally for Final Fantasy Vs. XIII to be renamed Final Fantasy XV. It wouldn't be until mid-2012 that Square Enix would abandon the PlayStation 3 and shift full development to the newer upcoming hardware. This decision would delay development yet again in order to port to new hardware, but the game now internally known as Final Fantasy XV would steal the show when it made its grand re-reveal at E3 2013.
The brand new trailer was loud, bombastic, and action-packed. It was a slow build-up showing scenes of Noctis as a young child, then made an exhilarating shift filled with set pieces the likes of which only Uncharted could hope to meet. Environments were filled with immense detail and it was clear the game was running on new hardware. Lighting and special effects in particular looked markedly better, especially a fire spell Noctis performed. The trailer comes to a climax with Noctis narrowly avoiding falling debris and a name change a year in the making. This exciting new trailer and name change reinvigorated excitement for Final Fantasy XV as it looked to be one of the must-own games for the new upcoming hardware. Immediately following the new trailer was the announcement of a game fans had been eagerly waiting a long time for, Kingdom Hearts 3. What makes Kingdom Hearts 3 important to Final Fantasy XV was that Tetsuya Nomura would be directing both games at the same time. This seemed like a monumental task considering these two games were arguably the most important titles Square had announced, although that would all change at a later time. The day following, Square Enix released new footage showcasing Final Fantasy XV's combat. It took place in the same courtyard area from the initial trailer, as Noctis and his team battled troops and behemoths. While relatively short, it was nice to see longer pieces of uncut gameplay. Once again, however, Final Fantasy XV would lay dormant for some time, as this would be the last we would see of the game for over a year. After Final Fantasy XV missed E3 in 2014, many wondered how development was coming along as it seemed like XV had good momentum for it after its exciting showing at E3 the year prior. For those that remained patient and what lied in wait at 2014's Tokyo Game Show may have been the most promising news yet. The first bit of news was a bit shocking. Tetsuya Nomura would no longer be working on the project as co-director Hajime Tabata became the sole director for the game. In a statement from Square Enix, current CEO Yosuke Matsuda said, As a director of Final Fantasy XV, Tetsuya Nomura has mainly worked on the original concept for the story and universe in addition to creating the characters. Hereafter, he will be focusing his efforts on the production of titles that can only be made possible by Nomura himself and delivering products that exceed the quality of past titles, starting with another one of his representative projects, Kingdom Hearts 3. The statement seemed to infer that Nomura assumed more of a creative director role when Tabata joined, and that since his work on the story and concepts was complete, his efforts would best be used elsewhere. Fans received the news with mixed feelings as some were upset to see Nomura leave after helming the project for so many years, while others praised the move hoping that with Tabata leading the project, 15 might actually see a release date. Tokyo Game Show also saw the release of a new trailer as well as some very exciting news. The new trailer portrayed more of the story's road trip theme as most of it was spent with Noctis and his friends driving in a car. One new character named Luna was introduced. This led many to speculate that she may have replaced the character of Stella due to their striking resemblance. Whether this is true or not remains to be seen. There were also bits of new open world gameplay and exploration with a few throwback enemies such as goblins and gorillas shown as well. Possibly the most exciting news of the show was that a demo for Final Fantasy XV dubbed Episode Duskai would be included with Final Fantasy Type-0 HD, a next-gen remastering of a Japan-only PSP title set to be released in March of 2015 for PlayStation 4 and Xbox One. This gave many hope that a release date was forthcoming with a playable demo out in early 2015. In the months following Tokyo Game Show, information has been released in a more steady fashion than ever before in the form of a new live web show called Tabata's Active Time Report, in which 15's director would showcase new bits of gameplay. At the time of this recording, the show has had a handful of episodes that so far have included showcases of Final Fantasy XV's tech, as well as snippets of uncut open-world exploration. At the tail end of 2014, seemingly out of nowhere, Square Enix released for the first time ever video of the English voice cast. Hey! Step on the gas and don't look back! One step ahead of you. Whoa! That thing is huge! And it's looking right at us! This can't be for real! Shortly following, Square Enix released yet another trailer at Japan's Jump Festa. This included more English voice work as well as a new town, summons, and possibly the first ever female Sid for the series. Despite the long development cycle and numerous delays, one thing remains clear. The hype and excitement for Final Fantasy XV continues to endure. With each morsel of news, legions of fans flock to social media and message boards ready to be lost in another epic Final Fantasy adventure. 
It seems as if the team at Square Enix are taking the development of Final Fantasy XV very seriously in the hopes of making it one of the best ever. Game director Hajime Tabata even went so far as to say, If Final Fantasy XV doesn't do well, perhaps there's not much of a future for console games. It kind of really depends on how that goes. The quote was mainly referring to console gaming in Japan, but even so, pressure on their team must be immense. Final Fantasy is one of gaming's most enduring and beloved franchises spanning nearly three decades and over 110 million games sold. Fans have enjoyed meeting new characters and getting lost in magical worlds. Final Fantasy XV is shaping up to be another exciting entry with plenty of new innovations to reinvigorate the franchise. The long wait has been a grueling one, but with regular news and a demo coming this March, hopefully we won't have to wait too much longer to get lost in the next fantasy. <laughs> もうすぐだ。